Where is Gabby Petito? It's a question everybody across the country is asking right now. And here you can see the missing person flyer for her. 22 years old, blonde hair, blue eyes, five foot five. And you see that van it was the center of her universe on social media. It's called the van life. And uh, people would take these vans and convert them into pseudo RVs and travel the country. And that's exactly what Gabby and her fiance were doing. For months, they were going to state parks in different places across the country. And now she's missing. And this is an amazing story and a huge, huge mystery. This video is going to be a little different than the normal videos on this channel. I'm going to take my time and walk through some stuff. And I want you to be able to look at this video and understand what's going on with the Gabby Petito case. We're going to hear first from this police officer who's telling some details of her case and then from Gabby Petito's father. We're going to move on and we're going to read the police reports. We're going to get a full timeline of what the, what happened and when it happened. And lastly, we're going to hear from Gabby Petito's family's attorneys who just uh, released a pretty insane message with a direct, direct comment to the family of her fiance. It's all pretty wild, so let's get into it now. Here is this North Port Florida Sheriff's Officer talking about exactly what happened to start this case. Thank you all for being here. My name is Todd Garris and I am the Chief of Police of the City of Northport. Um, today we're here to talk about uh, Gabby. Um, Gabby was a resident of, or is a resident of Northport. And Northport is a close knit community where what happens is felt by all. We are here today to provide an update to Gabby Petito who was reported missing on September 11th, 2001. In June of 2021, Gabby and her fiance embarked on a cross country trip with plans to travel across the West Coast and visit state national parks in the Western United States. They were traveling in Gabby's 2012 white Ford van and documented their journey on YouTube and social media. We have a picture of the white Ford van that they were traveling in. She maintained regular contact with her family members during her travels However, that communication abruptly stopped around the end of August. Gabby is a vibrant 22 year old with a love for life and adventure. She's a daughter, a sister, and a granddaughter. She was excited to share her cross country trek with others on social media and with her family. Gabby's family and those in the community here and in New York who know and care for her are hoping for answers about her whereabouts. Okay, so they're working with the FBI. There's a huge investigation going on. They went on a tour of the country in this van of theirs to explore, and uh, he came back and she did not. Now, we're also going to hear from her father in a very emotional statement that he makes. Her father steps up to the microphone and let's listen into what he said. The need from everybody here is help because the, the goal is still not met. And that goal is to bring Gabby home safe, all right? And uh, I'm asking for help from everyone here. I'm asking for help everyone at home. I'm asking for help from the parents of, uh, of Brian. And I'm asking for help of the family members and friends of the Laundry family as well. You know, there is a tip line that you can call anonymously. Whatever you can do to make sure my daughter comes home, I'm asking for that help. There is nothing else that matters to me now. This, this girl right here, this is what matters. That is it. Anything else, it comes second to this. Thank you. So there's the father speaking at this press conference saying, help me out. Uh, I need to find my daughter. Let's go back to the timeline now. So Gabby Petito and her fiance, and his name is Brian Laundrie, they left on July 2nd, okay? That's when this all started. They departed from Blue Point, New York, where Petito was originally from, to celebrate her younger brother's, uh, younger brother's graduation from high school. They left New York on July 2nd. They planned a four-month cross-country journey. The pair had gotten engaged recently, but postponed their wedding plans because of the coronavirus pandemic and decided to take the trip instead. They were driving Petito's white 2012 Ford Transit van, which was converted into an RV-like vehicle. It allowed them to camp and cook meals as they traveled, and they posted all of this online. It gets a lot of views on social media. It's a very popular topic and category. 
On August 12th, there was an altercation in Moab City, Utah. We're going to go over the police report of this in just a moment. There was an encounter with Petito and Laundry. The pair was described as having engaged in some sort of altercation at the time. Then, on August 25th, it's the last known whereabouts of Petito. Gabby Petito uh, was seen last on that day. Uh, last known to be in Grand Teton, Wyoming, heading towards Yellowstone National Park. On August 30 was her last communication with her family. Her family, however, says they don't believe this message was actually sent from Gabby. It didn't appear to be in her voice. On September 1st, Laundry, her fiance, returned to Northport, Florida. He was not with her. Gabby was nowhere in sight, and he's clammed up. He's not saying anything to police or her family. On September 11th, family reports Petito missing. So this many days later, they finally put this report in, and it becomes official. Uh, she is a missing person. And on September 15th, uh, the fiancé laundry has been named a person of interest. Now, they talked about this incident where there was some domestic altercation between the two of them. We're going to read from the incident report right here. This is Officer Eric Pratt who pulled them over. Uh, police officers were dispatched to report of a domestic problem that had taken place near the Moonflower Co-op. Remember that, Moonflower Co-op. It appeared a male and female had left the scene traveling north on Main in a white Ford Transit van with a black ladder on the rear after the male and female engaged in some sort of altercation. It wasn't clear, but I believe it was reported the male had observed to have assaulted the female. I heard other officers report they were off to look for the vehicle, and they said that uh, this process started to begin. I arrived on scene and observed as two park officers all also arrived. I assisted Officer Rob Robbins with this investigation until I was called away to report uh, of an intoxicated male posing a safety risk to himself or others. Before leaving, I spoke with the male driver of the van, the female passenger, also called Chris to get more information from him. All three individuals gave a similar and consistent story. Here you go. Uh, they said, uh, here's the basic gist of it. The driver of the van, a male, had some sort of argument with the female, Gabby, as I recall. The male tried to create distance by telling Gabby to go take a walk and calm down. She didn't want to be separated from the male and began slapping him. He grabbed her face and pushed her back as she pressed upon him and the van. He tried to lock her out and succeeded except for his driver's door. She opened that and forced her way over him and into the vehicle before they drove off. Nobody reported the male struck the female. Both the male and the female said they're in love and engaged to be married, and they don't want any charges filed. That's what the police report says. Here's some of the body cam footage from Moab where they were pulled over because of this domestic situation. Uh, but you tend to have a lot of anxiety and stress? <laughs> a lot of anxiety. And what's his name? Busy. Is it Brian? Is he usually pretty patient with you? Yeah. She's crying through this whole video. It's like an hour. All right, so these officers talked to her about her anxiety and about what happened, and she says she doesn't want to press any charges, but she was insanely upset as these officers were talking to her. Remember I said, remember the Moonflower Co-op? Because that's where this fight between Gabby Petito and her fiancé went down. Well, there's a strange, strange situation playing out here. You might recognize this couple on the right. These two women were married to one another, and mysteriously, they were murdered in Utah. Uh, and strangely enough, one of them just so happened to work at this Moonflower Community Co-op right at this exact time. They're like a day after they got into a fight in front of that Moonflower Community Co-op uh, where Kylan Schultz used to work, the two, Kylan Schultz and her wife, Crystal Beck Turner, were found dead in LaSalle Mountains of Utah on the weekend of August 14th. The bodies of the lesbian couple were discovered later by their friends. There's some bizarre correlations between these two, and police are investigating to see if they are somehow connected. Now to the uh, attorney for the Petito family, who is calling out the Laundry family. The Laundry family, they say, is protecting Brian, who knows where their daughter is, and they will not speak to them. Their son will not speak to them. They, their son will not speak to the police, and the family is getting very, very upset about this. Listen to what the attorney has to say. I'm Rick Stafford, and I represent the Schmidt and the, Pet and the Petito family. I have a letter that they want to send to Christopher and Rivetta Laundry, and I'm going to read it at this time and then I'll take limited questions. Christopher and Rebetta Laundry, we are writing this letter 
to ask you to help find our daughter. We understand you are going through a difficult time and your instinct is strong to protect your son. We ask you to put yourselves in our shoes. We haven't been able to sleep or eat and our lives are falling apart. We believe you know the location of where Brian left Gabby. We beg you to tell us. As a parent, how could you let us go through this pain and not help us? As a parent, how could you put Gabby's younger brothers and sisters through this? Gabby lived with you for over a year. She's going to be your daughter-in-law. How can you keep her location hidden? You were both at Jim and Nicole's house. You were both so happy that Brian and Gabby got engaged and were planning to spend their lives together. Please, if you or your family have any decency left, please tell us where Gabby is located. Tell us if we are even looking in the right place. All we want is for Gabby to come home. Please help us make that happen. And that was from Jim Schmidt, Nicole Schmidt, Joe Petito, and Tara Petito. The attorney goes on to suggest that this family knows exactly where their missing daughter is, and they don't want to share this information because they're protecting her fiancé, his son. So where is Gabby Petito? Was there an altercation between the two of them that led to something terrible happening? What was it that happened between the two of them to send him back to Florida, leaving her behind? There are many questions here. There are conspiracies about potential serial killers in the deserts and in these areas that they've been traveling through. And many people are wondering the one question that's on top of the Petito family's mind right now. Why? Why isn't the other family talking about this? Why aren't they sharing the details that could lead to the safe uh, retrieval, if you'll excuse the term, of their lovely Gabby Petito? That is a huge question. What do you think is going on in this case? Where do you think Gabby is? Do you think something bad happened here? Do you think that the uh, Laundry family is covering up something that occurred the truth is going to come out eventually on this one, and this story is big and getting bigger by the moment. So give me your thoughts in the comments below and share this with a friend so they can be fully informed of what's happening with this story about the missing 22-year-old Gabby Petito. If you're new around here, hit that follow button over at Facebook.com slash The News Junkie. Over on YouTube.com slash The News Junkie, hit the subscribe button. I look forward to your reactions and your comments. I appreciate you watching, and we'll talk to you again real soon.